everybody. I'm Nelly, I'm a journalist, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Check First, but also our uh, original project, which was Journalist Solidaire. I'm here with uh, Guillaume and Amory, who are also going to explain to you a few things. So uh, for me, I'm going to talk to you about Journalist Solidaire which is a uh, decentralized fact-checking open newsroom that was born during uh, lockdown on uh, March the 18th. It uh, gathers 150 members, uh, mostly in French-speaking countries, but also elsewhere. We had people also in France, Belgium, but also in Mexico, in Alaska, well, uh, e everywhere. And uh, those people were uh, senior journalists, uh, junior journalists, students, developers, uh, and we all had one goal, which was really fighting uh, fake news, disinformation during the COVID-19 pandemic. So it has for now led 140 investigation and written uh, 80 papers. And as we were all uh, decentralized, as we were uh, everywhere, uh, we had to get organized and we are working on uh, Discord, which is like uh, our office. Uh, we are also working on Airtable, which is uh, our database and uh, our tool to publish. And uh, Telegram, which is a messaging application to discuss our subject in task forces. So uh, during lockdown with all these uh, more than 150 people, we wanted to fight, fight fake news and we had the advantages of being uh, independent. We didn't belong to any, to one and only one newsroom, but we had one challenge which was that we needed people to trust us because people didn't uh, really knew us. So our vision, uh, we, we acquired this trust uh, thanks to four pillars, which are uh, the one you see, expertise, credibility, transparency, and agility. Expertise because we share a common basis, common uh, um, principle, like the international fact-checking network principle. And uh, we also work with uh, senior journalists that, who bring their, their, their skills and experience to the group. Uh, concerning the agility, well, with you can imagine that with 100 and 50 people working to, together, we, as I said, had to get really organized. And uh, we are pretty proud because we built a, a, a reliable system with structured uh, data sets and a, a methodology of work in only one month. And uh, concerning the credibility and uh, transparency uh, side, well, we choose to work in an open newsroom. The open newsroom is presented by, like, uh, is available on our website and it's presented like uh, pre-papers when uh, the work, the, where the working team is, will log every action, every interview, every researches uh, they do. And it's a way for us to ensure uh, trust uh, transparency of our method, like we are uh, doing an investigation about the news, so you see how we get to a conclusion, uh, and it also allows people to follow up on a subject. So people can see which subject are we working on and uh, how, how we are working on it. Uh, our methodology is uh, the following. So Anyone can uh, make us check a news that seem uh, dubious, uh, that they saw a message they receive on WhatsApp, something they saw on social media, and uh, they can send it to us uh, on our website or by social media. The subject is then submitted to everyone during a, an editorial conference where every, uh, all the editorial team is here. 
And if it hasn't been uh, debunked, if it hasn't been, been verified by another news, newsroom yet, uh, a task force is assigned on it. Uh, so that task force, which is one of the particularity of Journalistes Solidaires, is uh, that this task force is always composed of two journalists, one co coordinator, and eventually one mentor. So why did we decide to work like this? Well, we always have the image of a journalist working alone, uh, investigating alone in his office. And uh, we decided to, to change that because we thought that this image was uh, a bit outdated and working in a task force with two journalists uh, allowed them, well, first to, to share experience and their knowledge, but mostly to have a 360 vision, uh, degrees, sorry, vision of the, of the subjects. And then the coordinator is here to make them uh, like uh, keep the line by always asking the question, uh, well, uh, what, what question are we answering? Because it's tempting to go to uh, on, well, you start with the question and then you find many, many information and you want to investigate about uh, everything that you find. But we always had to keep in mind that we are answering one question and one and only one question. And uh, there can, as I said, also be a mentor uh, who is uh, a journalist from another newsroom that shares uh, his experience and his tools on the subject. When that task force is built, the team split works and investigates. And as I explained, they log every action, every researches in the open newsroom so that the readers can see how an investigation grow, goes. So it's public, everyone can see it, everyone can see how, uh, how it works. When and uh, only when they have an answer to their initial question, they validate it with the, their coordinator and they can write uh, an article or a video. Uh, knowing that there is no tons of answer uh, in journal study there, we decided that there were uh, five answers possible, which are uh, true, partially true, to be nuanced, false, and partially false. Then uh, when the article is written, the video is uh, written to, there is a uh, peer review, so the paper is corrected and validated. Uh, by uh, other member of Journalist Solidaire. And we published it on our web websites and uh, social medias. So in less than a month, uh, we, we built a, a real community that shared today uh, very strong bonds. And it was a pretty crazy experience and uh, with Amore and Guillaume, we wanted really to, we thought that there was something to do with it and we wanted to go further. And it that tense, that's why we created a check first that Guillaume is going to, to talk to you about right now. And hello, uh, thank you very much, Nelly. I'm, I'm Guillaume, I'm not a ghost. Um, and uh, what Nelly didn't tell you is that she was the editor in chief of uh, Journalist Solidaire for uh, some weeks during the most intense weeks when we uh, built that methodology. And the idea for us uh, was to bring that methodology and system and enhance it from individuals to institutions. So that's why we created a company uh, together with uh, Nelly and uh, Amory. Amory was um, sort of the CTO of uh, Journalist Solidaire. I was the president, which means I got to be the laziest. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you about uh, Check First now, which is that new company that we, we set up. What we want is to really build a partnership uh, in between uh, citizens, newsrooms, academics, institutions to find a solution 
to the problem of mis disinformation and, and go further than just enabling debunking, although enabling debunking is a really important role. So what we decided to do was to move on from the tools we had at disposal. I mean, Nelly told you about the puzzle, the jigsaw puzzle that we just put together between Airtable, Discord, Telegram, and other tools. And we wanted to build an ecosystem uh, in place of it, something that would enable us to collect better data, uh, to, to make debunking more straightforward, to fluidify the entire process. So we named that Canopy. So what does it mean? Canopy is a, is a, is a headless CMS, uh, a headless content management system where you can absolutely debunk uh, from. You can get access to tools, you can get access to resources, and you get access to people in, in Canopy. So it's one way to see it is, is uh, a central nervous point in between newsrooms, citizens, research centers, universities. So Canopy is uh, mainly the, the, the tool we chose to, to tackle these two goals. The first one is to amass data and to put some debunks out there. I mean, to try to counter disinformation in the uh, yet uh, the, the, the best possible way we have, which is debunking. And then to try to see if we can go further than just debunking. So let's talk about the first point uh, and stream, streamlining fact-checking. What we're bringing to the table, again, is one ecosystem, which is one solution uh, that is um, completely, um, it's, it's a compound of all the function that we had during Journalist Solidaire, meaning that we have a secure network, everything's encrypted, all the assets are protected, uh, the data is always structured in the same manner. If you are a newsroom in Africa, in New Zealand, in Brussels, in Berlin, you are all working in the same way uh, and, and that ensures for consistency which we feel is very important for people like you that's going to play with with the data um, something else we wanted to build is a system where trust would ensure that people could collaborate even if they don't know each other now during the lockdown we had that fantastic time where people were in a cage at home. Uh, they had a lot of skills and they went online and they just matched uh, you know, the skills and interests. And there was a sense of uh, default trust where we all know, uh, we're a bit panicking because it's uh, the, 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 the nasty virus out there, virus out there, but also we, we, we want to move towards a good cause, so we trust ourselves by default. That is something that's not going to be always present. So that's why we, we wanted to have that system that builds trust into itself, so that people who don't know each other can trust themselves and work together, sort of in, in the way that we, we knew during the, uh, during the lockdown. Something else Nelly touched upon is to keep the transparency of the processes. Everything's documented, everything is, uh, is readily available, so you can have uh, a look uh, of each step that has been taken in order to get to, to a certain result. So that's really the, uh, what we wanted to, to achieve with, uh, with Canopy. Again, our goal is to go from individuals to institutions and to have a global network of citizens to find and signal these uh, pieces of uh, potential fake information, uh, journalists, newsroom, fact checkers who can work on them, universities, academics who can compose the data and, and try to find new ways to, to work with them. Again, everything within that work, network are different instances of Canopy that work together and, and are completely encrypted. And when we say that we want to go a bit further, what we want to do is to give you the tools to understand the intellectual path that led to a debunk. There's a quote that I do like quite often from someone from PolitiFact, which says, uh, fact-checking is journalism distilled to its essence. And in fact, I think it's something that is quite 
near or kind of <laughs> trying to make the journalism closer to a programmer's mind because when you talk about fact checking what you're talking about is about rigor and you're talking about small elements logical elements that are going to build together a debunk so let's have a look at the way we see debunks as readers or viewers usually we see a black box coming on the table there, there is some sense of some explanation of what was what happened in in the black box before we came to a conclusion what, what the journalist has has done but in reality we we don't see everything that led to that conclusion. So what we want to bring to the table with Canopy is to demystify that and just to give every bit that builds that debunk and to label it as a logical unit. It can be a fact, it can be a tool, it can be a resource. I mean, everything that uh, a fact checker uh, crossed his, his or her path uh, during the, the debunk is, is documented and when, what we want to, to give you access to, to each and every one of, of these steps. And the good news is that there is absolutely no other way uh, to work in Canopy. Everything by default is documented. Everything goes into the system. So just to give you an idea on how fact checkers would work, I mean, it's a web app, so you, you would have very humane, clear information layout uh, where people could find and document everything uh, regarding a, a, an inquiry. Uh, they can log uh, all leads and conclusions that they, they, are, they are forming and, and everything is, is made available. And the good news is we started by building an API. So before even thinking about clients, the one I just showed you, uh, the, the goal of Canopy is to provide researchers uh, and academics with an API uh, through which they can retrieve the data automatically with an, without having to, uh, to fight you know, with uh, JSONs and, and CSVs uh, flying around or being requested by, by email. So what's behind the, the API? Uh, what, what we see behind the API is uh, the way we organize information within Canopy, which is using uh, the latest and greatest technology like MongoDB uh, for, for the data structure, uh, Scaleway, which is a French company, European company, by the way, uh, which acts uh, as our assets uh, store and Elasticsearch that is going to enable uh, really quick and uh, multi-dimensional searches in between different data sets. And that is all served uh, or populated by the API, which means that you can implement whatever you want before it. Um, so let's be a client, it could be a, a Google BERT implementation, you can do a private uh, uh, chat, encrypted chat, uh, or, or messaging system like Matrix and embed some content from Canopy within that interface. Uh, you can do a WordPress plugin, whatever you want uh, to, to access data from API and also to put data into uh, Canopy. So that's the way we, we want to, to go further, uh, to give really structured and shared data, to enforce that rigorous methodology, and also to guarantee the data integrity uh, with, with traceability. So that leads us to the second goal uh, before we, we start to talk about the data we, we're going to allow you to play with. Uh, the second goal of ours is to go beyond debunking because we all know that debunking is not uh, an end. Uh, far less people see debunks uh, in comparison to the people exposed to fake news. Uh, there's a study from 2018 that states that uh, fake news are traveling six times faster than real news on Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of psychological levers that we know about, like the confirmation bias, the backfire effect. I mean, all that makes it so it's really difficult for debunks to alone uh, fight the phenomenon of uh, misinformation or disinformation. So again, we want researchers to benefit from the network and we want to give them um, really a look into different quality data sets that are populated by different people around the globe. 
having variety in data sets we feel is very important to understand the way the fake news are, are, are um, uh, uh, really vicious being vicious and, and nauseous and nefarious so what, what one thing we want to do again by bringing the same methodology and having the same structure in the data uh, and, and allowing people from different backgrounds to, to populate these data sets is to give the, the richest possible uh, data and the highest quality possible data for researchers to work to attain some goals that we don't know about yet. I mean, there are probably some machine learning to be done. Uh, there's, there's probably some, uh, some AI to be trained or on that data. And we all know that in order for ML to be efficient, you need quite consequent sets of, of good quality data. Again, everything's available uh, through the API, which is really uh, what we wanted to start with, where we spent most of our summer uh, to, to do. And that's just our, our way to say, okay, debunks are really important. We're going to collect a lot of debunk. We're going to populate all the, these data sets, uh, but we want people like you, academics, to use that collected data to go beyond that and to, to reach uh, states where we can find solutions that we haven't thought about yet. And that would be enabled ideally by, by the data we, we have collected. We need to understand the mechanisms of propagation. We need to better understand the psychology of it. We need to understand who are the authors, the actors, or all of that needs to be done. And there's a, there's a mountain before us. There's uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of things about the way uh, they are perceived uh, that can be a multidisciplinary uh, approach uh, for, for, for that, that problem. So we offer you to, to work uh, together with the media, with citizens, and to have a, a holistic approach on that problem of disinformation, uh, because we feel that what's being done is not enough that uh, people like the IFCN, it's great that it exists. It's great that, that uh, since 2015, they, they do enforce good practice. They do have people work together, but we feel that what, what is lacking is the underlying infrastructure that enables all these people to collaborate in an efficient way. Uh, everybody's doing their things in, the, or, or in, in their little corners, and they do gather for symposiums or these times for webinars, but what the, the, the treasure trove we need to, to explore is, is the data. And that's we, uh, what, what we try to, to bring to the table. So what we hope to do with Canopy is to define new standards and, and to open that system uh, to, to anyone who wants to, to join it. So, that's for what we try to do next, based on uh, Journalist Solidaire and based on, on the way we collected the data you, you'll be playing with during the, uh, the hackathon. And, and uh, to talk about that data, I'd like to, uh, to invite Amory to, uh, to do just that. Hello, hi, it's nice to meet you. So basically, I will just introduce to you the data set we will give you for this hackathon. This, hackathon, this data set has been built by Journalists Solidaire during the COVID crisis. Journalists Solidaire is still a running uh, newsroom, so basically they are still uh, currently building data sets. That's, uh, the data set has been stopped the uh, previous week, so it's really brand new data set. Um, the data are composed in three main points. The first one is the report. So basically, as Nelly told you, uh, anyone, any citizen can ask a question to the, to the journalist Solidaire newsroom. This go to the form of media, tweets, Facebook message, WhatsApp message, whatever. The second data set is about the investigation itself. So basically, that's what the journalists have done to debunk the news. And the third part of the data set is about the publication. So basically, you will find papers about the debunk with information written uh, about it. So let's dig a bit inside the data set. So you will find 304 uh, entries into the report, then 122 investigation for 83 publication. 
Uh, on the investigation part, there is two sub uh, two sub data sets, which are the fake news authors and the unsafe sources. Um, if we dig inside the qualification of the data set, the language is in French. It covers mostly COVID-19 fake news and also some French fake news, for example, about politics or declaration of, uh, of the people. The formats are in CSV and JSON, and the license is basically, you can, you can use it for uh, educational. The period, as I said, cover March to September 2020. There is one weakness in this, that this specific data set because of the tool used. There is weak link, links between the collections. Uh, let's, let's dig a, a bit uh, inside the data set just for us to be clear. If you can see the, the tip in white with a pink background, it's about a link. If it's in green, that's a column which is most of the time populated. If it's in green, the column is over there but might not be populated. The first collection are the reports. So you will find the description of uh, the people. That's what we received as a message for uh, to, to, to investigate. The source of the claim, the virality of the, of the fake news. So basically it's a human estimation. So that's not by number. It's like, do you think that this fake news has been uh, spread a lot or not? It's a node between zero and five you will have a link of the fake news and the archive link of the fake news. Also, by the, not by the beginning of the of Journal Solidaire, but in the middle of, of the, um, the, the adventure, we decide to also ask the people who say that. So basically, is it an organization or is it someone? And what's his name? You will find also what type of con content is it? Is it a video? Is it a text? Is it an article? Is it a, a social media post or whatsoever? A team and if available, a copy paste of the original publication. You will find over there also a link with Créer, lier une fiche de fact check, which is basically a link to the investigation that has been done for, uh, for, uh, on this report. The three other inputs are Robert for the three. Basically, you will find that some reports are, are linked to a lié to a fact check extern. So basically, that's because another newsroom already uh, have uh, created a debunk about it. So we just link, uh, we just posted the debunk of the other newsroom on our social network. Let's dig inside the investigation, which is for us the most interesting uh, collection. Uh, over there, you will find the title of the investigation, a short description, and the state of the, the verification. So basically, you will find over there state use to, that says, yes, this is uh, currently, we are working on that, we, we are blocked on that, uh, it's finished, it's true, it's uh, partially true, it's uh, to nuance, blah, 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 blah. The, two, the one interesting field is the to-do list. The to-do list is basically what journalists has, has, have been done to debunk the news. That's really like bullet point on what we should do. So you will find over there, for example, uh, have an interview of this person, uh, collect information about this type of stuff, etc., etc. Action Entreprise is basically a textual uh, summary of what has been done during the investigation time by the journalist. Piste and Conclusion is basically the conclusion the, the, of the, the lead from uh, the, the described on the previous field. You have two links. <coughs> the first link is to Signalement Correspondant. So basically it links to the report, the, the, the initial report of the fake news and create or lié an article linked to the publication. Those links, as I said, are weak, so basically it's text link. In with Canopy, you will have a really strong link between the different collections, which, which will be based on ID, but using Airtable, we were not able to export that in that way. Uh, other interesting fields are état d'avancement du sujet, so basically if they still work on that or if, they, if it's finished, the team, some internal keywords, and uh, again a link to the, the, the original claim. The, on, after the, on this data set, you will have two sub data sets, which are the fake news, the unsafe sources, sorry. The unsafe sources, basically, that's 
what has been found by the journalists du during the investigation that is linked to the to this to the, the claim but the journalists declared the, those sources as unsafe so basically it can be a fake news it can be true it's too complicated for the journalists to determine by themselves is if it's true or false so as we don't want to publish those type of information to the public but we still want to collect them we call them unsafe sources to the opposite of safe sources which which are basically the sources gathered by the journalists and they, they will say this is like really official so we, we can use that as a sources over there, you will find the titer, the URL, again, an estimated virality. Again, it's a human estimation. So for you, is that information has been spread a lot or not? Again, a note on the zero to five. The type of, uh, of content, is it a video, a text, blah, 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 language, description, archive of the link. Um, most of the time, there is a copy paste. So even if the, the source disappeared, so you, you will have it. It's normally linked to, to an author. It's, it can be linked to a, an internal fact check and it can also be linked to a report. The other link is the fake news author. This is a really small data set because the way we did it wasn't uh, really, uh, really like easy for the journalist to, to, to complete it. Still, you will find a list of author of, of recognized <coughs> fake news authors. The last data set we provide to you are the publications. So basically, that's the debunk of the fake news. You will find over there the, the title. The chapeau is a short explain of the, the, the claim. Le corps de texte, which is the main debunk content. There is also a give you a Google review rating, which are basically the five uh, level of a, uh, of a debunk for Google because we submit all, all, all a debunk inside the fake, the, the fake news um, center of Google and uh, item review it, which is the claim in 70 character. There is again a link to the fact check and turn. So basically that's the link of the, uh, the, the investigation that lead to this publication. And also I'll, I added in the data set the, the name of the people who write the article and who coordinate the article. So maybe you can find something interesting about that because it's most of the time some, uh, there's like uh, 30 people or so something like that who write the article. So you might fi may find some pattern inside the, the, the redaction of the article or, or stuff like that. So may the truth be with you and good hacking with our data set. We are available at any time on Slack or by email if you have any question about our data set. Mm -hmm.